God bless my brothers and sisters. It's still a beautiful day to worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. So I did a teaching yesterday uh, talking about the Easter. Okay, how it's pagan and it doesn't have anything to do with Jesus. Now, <clears throat> you know, for God being a God, right? A supernatural being and, and, and being in heaven, right? So most people don't have connection, nor do they have access to heaven. You can't take a ship. You can't take a boat. Right? Can't take a kayak. Can't take a plane. Can't take a spaceship to get to heaven, can you? God bless, brother. You can't you can't teleport to heaven, can you? Okay? So you're talking about a supreme being as God is, the creator, the father. Okay? The best that there ever is. You can't go to his doorstep. You can't find his address. You don't live in a realm that will allow you to access his house. He doesn't have a telephone where you can call him. He doesn't have a beeper or a pager. He doesn't have FaceTime. Or Skype. Right? So how do we know what it is that we are required to do in this religion called the Christian faith? How do we know without being able to call him and talk to him and being able to go to his house? When you go to work, your boss, supervisor tells you, Verbally, or they left an email or a voicemail, stop buggy, or a text message. What they want you to do for that day, and you can write them back, call them, communicate with them, but you can't do that with God, right? So, how do you know what it is that God wants you to do? How do you figure out what is his purpose for my life and what is his will for my life? How do we know that fornication is wrong? How do we know that adultery is wrong? How do we know that we can't live like the rest of the world? How do we know that lying is wrong? How do we know that the Lord hates iniquity? How do we know? Do we just make it up? Do we just do what we want to do? So the, the way that we have understanding, the way that we have knowledge and wisdom is through God's word. We are instructed through his word. And when we're given the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit works with the word of God. And it guides us to all truth. Right? Speaks through us. When we pray, intercedes for us. Okay? The Holy Ghost. Now, so how do we know? Should we celebrate Easter, Christmas, or Thanksgiving? Hey God, should we do it? Hey, God, should we celebrate Easter? Jesus' resurrection? Should we uh, uh, celebrate Christmas? They say it's his birthday. What about Thanksgiving, God? Somebody told me that the word Thanksgiving's in the Bible. But America's only two and something years old. So clearly the word Thanksgiving was created before the holiday Thanksgiving. But this is what they say. So you go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and verse 17. 
The word of God reads this. It says this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, duly furnished unto all good works. They read it and say, how can we be perfect? It doesn't say it. They're not Christians. They get, the God Kevin Kelly's going to get mad at me when he see my post. He hasn't seen it yet. He's going to get mad at me. But doesn't it say to reproof? So am I not doing what the Bible is telling me to do when I'm rebuking Jehovah's Witnesses, Hebrew Israelites, non-denominational, denominational people? Am I not doing what the words say? Do you see me up here doing those things that they're doing? Do you see me promoting tithes and offering? Do you see me claiming to be part of a denomination? Do I claim to have my own ministry? Do I make up my own church name? No. So I'm qualified because that shows that I'm not a hypocrite to be able to reproof, to rebuke those who are disobeying and disrespecting my God's word. Mocking him. You understand? I am commanded by God and in my religion to uphold righteousness. He told the brother, Paul, Paul told the brother to preach the word of God in season and out of season. Right? No days off. So I'm commanded, whether you believe it or not, whether you believe in the word of God or not, I just read it to you. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So if we were instructed to celebrate Easter, they would have told us how. We're taught to pray lifted up with holy hands. We're told how to deal with a virgin. We're taught that if a woman leaves her husband, let her remain unmarried. And we're told that they should join back together. Right? We're told that if a woman husband die, she's able to remarry, but only in the Lord. Right? So we have particular instructions. Ain't nobody guessing, is it okay to do such and such? If it wasn't written, as the Bible say, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And the main word in, this, in these verses is the word instruction. All through the New Testament, you see instructions. They say that if a woman is praying or prophesy, her head has to be covered. If a man is praying or prophesy, and he have his head covered, he dishonor his head. That's the word. So we have instructions. That's right, brother. You see? Y'all see? Listen to what I'm saying. Sit down, buggy. If we were to celebrate Christmas and the Bible gives us such details on how to do particular things. They never would have left it up to us to imagine how we should do it. To come up with what we want to do. When we have 27 books that is telling us how to pray. How we should pray. That our head shouldn't be covered or should be covered. That we should remain married or unmarried. Right? Not to fornicate. Not to lie. I mean, we got instructions. And when we come together, we even have instructions on communion. On uh, 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 doing this in remembrance of the Lord. Right? We have instructions. It even tells you that people do it un un unworthy. And they become sick and weak. And many sleep. For not listening to what was said. See? 
So that's the point that I'm trying to make. See? That's the reality, brothers and sisters. Where are the instructions? Because Christianity made up these things. They're not Christians. A Muslim is not a Christian. Buddha is not a Christian. Hindu. What makes you a Christian is one who has the Holy Spirit and one who is living and believing, obeying the word of God. If you don't do those things, you're not a Christian. Yes, there's more. Believing that he died and he rose on the third day. Confessing him. At, uh, yes, we, we know all that. I'm telling you the basics of being a Christian is being obedient. A person already done all of that. Repented for their sins, confessed their sins. They already did all of that. Believe that he died and he rose, been baptized with water and received the spirit. Yes. Oh, look, Brother Ron didn't say this. Come on now. I'm up here every day. I didn't say it in one of my other videos. You understand? The Lord didn't say the same particular uh, things every time. You know what, what has to take. You watch any of my videos, you, you'll get the whole picture. If you'd heard the Lord preaching in Jerusalem and heard him preaching in Nazarene, you'd heard the same thing. Okay? Matthew 5, 6 and 7. Was he repeating himself in those verses? But he repeated himself other places, right? So it's a time and place for everything. Ecclesiastes tells you that. Now, this is what I'm trying to explain to y'all. Why is there no instructions on the things that the so-called Christians do today? No instructions. There's no instructions on Christmas, Easter. And the way we know that these things are true for the world because the world keeps documentations of their achievements and their compliments the same way the Bible wrote down everything that it wanted us to know how do you know when you hear the, the, the Star Spangled Banner that song wasn't made yesterday it was passed down you understand battles were fought when you look at Pearl Harbor and they was driving them planes into them ships and them boats and all that stuff and you go into the into the ocean you'll probably see debris you'll probably see old torpedo shells and missiles whatever they was carrying on them planes you'll probably see guns that was on the ship being sunken okay so you can't erase what is true you can't erase what they documented to be true we've been writing stuff down for a long time brothers and sisters it's been passed on for a long time how did queen elizabeth become a king I mean a queen. How did Queen Elizabeth become, become a queen? You think that when you think that when her great 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 grandparents they had technology, they had FaceTime, they had Google search, they wrote this stuff down and passed it on. And people who came later on refurbished those things. Okay? Copied the same thing that was being that was wrote in the book that was passed down to them. When the book got older, they refurbished it. They wrote it, they wrote with new ink. And as as time goes by, paper, animal hide, whatever they use, ink will wear and tear, fade. So they'll rewrite it down. How you think Queen Elizabeth got to the throne? And not your mom or your dad. How come you're not a queen over there like she was? So it had to be documented that she was going to be heir to the throne. Right? Because her dad before her was a king. And then before her dad, which was her grandfather, he was what? Then it goes on and goes on and goes on. Because it was documented. So the world is telling you that they created Easter. It's their holiday. The false Christians who are delusional and who are recruited by Satan don't want you to look at them as being non-believers. So they come up with this, these, these false teachings and say, oh, Easter is for Jesus. But there's Easter bunnies and, and, and eggs all around you. And Walmart, today Publix was closed today. I couldn't believe it. 
even Publix and Lowe's is closed today for this fake holiday. You see what I told you on my last, in one of my teachings? There, let's look at statistics, facts. There are over 300 million people in this country. And out of 300 and something million, 200 million claim to be Christians. You see why Publix is closed? You see why Lowe's is closed? Where do you go in Publix and see the word of God? Where do you go in Publix and see you can buy liquor in Publix? You can walk in Lowe's and somebody can mistreat you, stereotype you, have hatred and racism in their heart towards you. Where do you see the word of God being manifested in these establishments? Where do you see the love of Christ being manifested in these stores that are closed today for some fake something called Easter? Where? Where do you see it? So what is public clothes for? They sell liquor that gets you drunk. They sell cigarettes that takes your, your uh, distract from anxiety. The Bible said that he'll keep you in perfect peace. They sell condoms, vibrators, all different type of things that are of the world. So why are they closed on a, a holiday that's supposed to represent the resurrection of Jesus Christ? When the Bible say the Gentiles blaspheming the name of God. First Thessalonians 4 and 5. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as Gentiles which not know God. What are Gentiles, guys? Non-believers. So why are non-believers closing their stores for a day that, that represents a resurrection of Jesus Christ? I mean... I mean, come on, brothers and sisters. Why would unbelievers participate in Christmas? Do, do you see these celebrities? I'm talking about all over the world celebrating Ramadan if they're not Muslims. I mean, you got non-people who claim to be Christians who celebrate Christmas. But they don't go to church. They don't read their Bible, don't want to hear anything about God or Jesus, but they celebrate Christmas because the world created it first. The Europeans brought that stuff here. Easter, all of it. I'm telling you, do your research. That's why there's documentation. We can't sit here and refuse what these people write about themselves. That's their history. The same way we read the Bible. How are we going to read a 2,000 year old um, uh, uh, New Testament and then don't want to look at what the world has documented about itself, wrote down about itself, set in stone for itself. How do y'all know Martin Luther King was a real person? How do y'all know Jackie Joyner Kersey, Malcolm X, Elvis Presley, when y'all wasn't even born when they was alive? Because it's been documented written down somewhere because it's public record you understand christmas is public record how it started easter is public record how it started dictionaries encyclopedias are full of information that you can go and look up for yourself no true christian has any business with these fake holidays they do not represent God. The word of God clearly said in Romans 2 and 24, for the name of God is blaspheming amongst the Gentiles through you as it is written. Come on now. So why would Publix, Lowe's, and other major businesses and franchises close their stores on Easter? Why do, why do Chick-fil-A close on Sunday I'm just asking you see how the world follows the world you don't know if today is Sunday how how when Constantine the Great was the one who named the days of the week today could be the second day of the week and we're saying it's the seventh day. 
how do you know? When times changed, they had Roman calendars and di- no, then you had different uh, uh, kings and emperors who was in positions of power, right? They wasn't consulting God. If it's not biblical, how can we believe it? Now, let's get to the topic of the discussion. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. I want you to listen real closely. Listen real, real closely, right? This is going to destroy everything you ever heard. And what you ever believed in your life in regards to Easter. The Bible is not a lie. The Bible said, let God be true and every man lie. Right? Let's go to Acts 12, verse 1. Now, about the time Herod the king, a Jew, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Are y'all not reading what it's saying? Do y'all not know the word Easter is mentioned in this chapter right here? You've been lied to, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you. He told you that judgment was going to start in the house of God first. He told you that he was going to send prophets in the book of Revelation. That's not me. But they're telling you that they were going to come. You see Revelation, he rebuking those churches. Tell them, go back to their first love. You see the revelations. Okay? Listen. Now about the time Herod the king, a king, y'all, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. You hear that? And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Y'all hear that? Unleavened bread. What is what, what else is it called? See? Read your word. Okay? Now, look at verse 4, Acts 12. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarters of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Stop there. Stop there. Let me read it again. Delivered him to four courtesans of soldiers, contorians, sorry, of soldiers to keep, to keep him intending after Easter to bring forth the people. Now they already mentioned unleavened bread. Okay. And now he's saying Easter. So, let me, so let's stop, let's stop, let's stop and listen. I'm serious, brothers and sisters. That's why I'm acting like that. Enough is enough, okay? Listen. Now, this king, which is a Jew, okay? Not a Greek, right? Not a Roman, but a Jew. He killed James, but he first persecuted the church y'all didn't see in verse 1 he did what he vexed certain of the church he brought terror upon it and he killed our beloved James the brother of John the son of Zebi killed him with the sword cut him you understand? They're telling you the way he killed him to put you in the mind frame of how this king was to kill somebody that brutal with a sword, an innocent man who didn't fight and didn't run, but he still found it in him heart to kill him. Then look what it said. He seen that it pleased the Jews from a death of a Christian one who believes in the resurrected Jesus. He killed him. Then he goes and apprehend another beloved brother, Apostle Peter. One who believes in the resurrected Christ, Jesus. Then he throws him in prison to do what? To keep him Intending after Easter. Brothers and sisters, y'all are really, really quiet on this phone. 
Let me ask y'all a question. Why would he wait till after Easter and he killed men that would have celebrated, quote unquote, Easter, as the false Christians say? Make it make sense. Easter is supposed to symbolize by the false Christian the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, right? So why would he care to wait till after Easter was finished and finalized? Why would he show respect to a day that represents James, Lord's resurrection, Peter's, Lord's resurrection? Why would he represent that? Why would he allow that when he didn't allow them to preach nor teach? And they arrested them in the temples, as you've seen, when they're preaching the word of God. So why would he, why do you see all through the book of Acts, they persecuted them for preaching the word of God? So now they're allowing them to have Easter after he killed James and arrested Peter? Why on earth would he allow them to celebrate or allow them to have Easter, which deliberately go against what Herod and the Jews believed? Because it wasn't anything to do with Jesus. Do your research. Easter was way before Christ came to this earth in flesh and blood. The Greeks, people celebrated these things. The equinox, the beginning of spring. This is why y'all got it in March. Foolish people. Read it. What you thinking they got it in March for? When's the spring, guys? <laughs> this is sad. I'm telling you. Do y'all see what it says? He wanted to keep him. To keep him intending after Easter. Kelji, come on. Why would someone kill someone who would have celebrated Easter and arrest someone who would have celebrated Easter as the false Christians say and then wait to interrogate Peter to after the holiday that Peter wouldn't. Brothers and sisters, I read the rest for yourself. I'm done.